we are in the West entering a new age of censorship. Most recently, we've seen how the inclusion ambassadors or commissars that attach themselves to all publishers and indeed to all commercial concerns have set to work on the fiction of Roald Dahl. They've now turned their attention, the censors, to Ian Fleming and the James Bond books, and they are working comprehensively to expunge all that is unsuitable in the James Bond novels. Uh, this is, of course, very disheartening. How to get round it? I would suggest, if you can, get hold of the Coronet paperback edition of uh, these novels by Ian Fleming. They have the advantage of containing a preface by Anthony Burgess, which is very engaging. Burgess has a, a very, very short portrait of Bond uh, as part of the preface. Here's some extracts from it. James Bond has the stuff of immortality about him. He intrigues us. He is tough, ingenious, and not lacking in contradictions. He loves women. He is an addict to Moreland specials with the three cold rings. In him, there is a powerful vein of Puritanism and a capacity for self-disgust, which denies the amorality of his murderous calling and its sensual compensations. He's half Scots and half French Swiss. One element explains the puritanical streak and granite gift of endurance. The other makes him fluent in French and German, at home on skis, and a wine lover and gourmet. He belongs to the Cold War in its dangerous phase, when it was not dangerous to smoke 60 cigarettes a day, and when the values of imperial conservatism, best exemplified by the retired Admiral M, and not denied by 007, flavoured the work of those engaged on Her Majesty's Secret Service. There is a kind of Renaissance zest and bravura about him, yet the gusto is controlled. The banquet of the senses is the reward for dangerous work performed on behalf of a free world. If he reports for duty with a hangover, there is always M to recall him to the ancient virtues of discipline and sobriety. Bond is tough and brave, and yet he is no cold bath ascetic. There is a quiet joy in life. The fast car, the correct recipe for a vodka martini, a dinner and a bridge game at Blades, the brand names of superior toilet articles, and perhaps the seductively ill-parted hair of a pretty girl. The joys are all the more intense for being fleeting. Death may come at any moment for 007. He is licensed to kill, and there is American respect and Soviet fear of this dream figure.